All right, as uh, as deception keeps on ramping up to extreme measures, we uh, had this other recorded incident that, that came out a couple of days ago of a video that came out of wanting world peace and build a third temple. Okay. Um, and here's the article right here, which I'll get into in a moment. But I'm going to read what this uh, what uh, the what this website says about this, which is very well accurate. It says the Temple Institute. He's quoting from that article. The Temple Institute, which has rec recreated 60 vessels to be used in a third temple, and which sponsors educational programs about the temple worldwide, has created a $100,000. Indiegogo campaign to draft plans for a third temple. Now, <clears throat> there is no prophesied, nor is there any biblical need for a third temple. Okay, the third temple is not prophesied. You can look in Ezekiel or whatever, and these types of things. Oh, let's see, it is prophesied. It's in Ezekiel 40 48. No, that's not talking about the third temple. However, any Christ working with the deceived minions in every nation on earth will demand a third temple so as to mock what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. Jesus plainly said it is finished when he died for us on that cross. You can see John 19.30 for that. In fact, the Bible also shows a temple veil was torn from top to bottom when Jesus died, proving it was finished. You can see Matthew 27.51 for that. So, I mean, when, he, when it was finished, it was finished. Okay, We are the temple of God. Okay, there is no need for a Jewish temple. <clears throat> like the keeping of feast days by some unfortunate Christians that have allowed themselves to be lured into apostasy by false teachers, Jews erecting a third temple today so as to sacrifice lambs for their sins mocks what Jesus declared was finished at Calvary. Will they build a temple? No clue, no care. However, if it helps to deceive billions, then count on it. Truth is, the campaign to do so has already deceived many to date. So whether they build it or not doesn't really matter because many are already being led to mock Christ so as to accept Antichrist when he stands as Messiah before men demanding their worship. Okay, and just to prove what I said, in Matthew 27, 51, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. So the veil, the curtain of the temple is rent in twain, so now everyone had access to the Holy of Holies, the most holy place, upon the death of Jesus Christ, when he became that perfect sacrifice. And in John 19.30 it says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Okay? And then we go further, we're going to look at what the temple is. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as at the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, or for except there come a falling away first, or that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there's going to be an apostasy that happens that triggers the revealing of the man of sin, and Hopefully those that have been following these videos long enough, you know who that man of sin is. And he's been revealed a long time ago, and he still is revealed today. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now this isn't talking about sitting in a literal, physical temple built of, made of stone and brick and mortar. No. When you look at the word sitteth, it's talking about sitting in the midst of, in the midst of people, okay? Now, this isn't talking about the rebuilt temple, as many dispensationalist proponents would like us to believe in these types of things. No, this is the temple of God, which 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17 clearly defines that, Know ye not that ye... Us, you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. And in Daniel eleven forty five it says, And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palaces between the seas in the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. That phrase, in the glorious holy mountain, is basically in not a physical holy mountain here in on this earth in Israel, not the physical Mount Zion, but those that are made pillars of the temple of God that has their home, has their kingdom in the glorious holy mountain of God 
Mount Zion, the heavenly city, the heavenly Jerusalem. That is our home. The kingdom of heaven is within us, okay? And so what happens? This guy, this man of sin, sits in the midst of the of God's people, declaring himself to be God, deceiving many, okay? And that's clearly what this is. So are they going to build a third temple? Again, I don't know. And frankly, it doesn't really matter to me. Because the third temple is not prophesied to be built before a rapture or whatever. Okay, it's not. It's not there. Um, so they can go ahead and build it, but I mean, could they build the temple as to deceive millions upon billions of people? Absolutely. And that could very well be the case. Okay, but the thing is, is that building a third temple is not um, mentioned in scripture it's not talked about you know second Th second Thessalonians 2 is not talking about the building of a third temple uh, mainly because of the fact that the temple of God right there as it is defined literally the same wording temple of God is found in following first Corinthians 316 which you are we are the temple of God okay <clears throat> And again in Daniel 11:45, he shall plant the tabernacles of his palaces between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. That glorious holy mountain is representative as God's people. Okay, God's people, the church, basically. <sighs> now, do we have someone that's doing this right now as we speak? Well, let's have a look real quick before we play the video from Temple Institute. Okay, so real quick, I want to bring your attention to this article right here out of the uh, Independent. And it says, Pope Francis issues top 10 tips for happiness. And um, scroll down a little bit right here. I want to bring your attention to this phrase here. These two paragraphs. Highlights include a call to families to turn off the TVs when they sit down to eat because even though television is useful for keeping up with the news, having it on during meal times doesn't let you communicate with each other, according to a Catholic News Service translation of the interview. Sounds good, right? Well, when you look at this next paragraph here, it says, And Francis said people will also be much happier when they stop trying too hard to bring others around to their way of thinking, including on religion. He said the church grows by attraction, not proselytizing, and added that the best way to get through to anyone was with dialogue, starting with his or her own identity. Now, the Pope also basically um, gave us... Uh, 10 tips for a happier life and before I get into two of the tips I want to bring your attention to this right here okay the 1828 Webster's Dictionary defines proselytizing as the making of converts to a religion or religious sect or to any opinion system or party they are possessed with a spirit of proselytism in the most fanatical decree or it's a conversion to a system or creed so in other words we don't need we can't we shouldn't be converting people we shouldn't be evangelizing or spreading the gospel the true gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ we shouldn't be um, spreading the message of the gospel the message of salvation of Jesus Christ we shouldn't be doing that according to the Pope okay and you see why a lot of people flock to this man atheists homosexuals and these types of things because hey you know, all are welcome, okay? The church grows by attraction, not proselytizing. And you see everybody wandering after this guy because of his views on this whole <clears throat> ecumenical soup that he's promoting, okay? And so let's go ahead and look at these tips here. Well, let's look at number five first. <clears throat> number five says Sundays should be holidays. Workers should have Sundays off because Sunday is for family, he said. Now, now the end begins would, would go out and say, well, it's interesting that they say that's, that, that he doesn't say Sundays is for worship of Jesus Christ. But, however, Sunday is not really the true day of rest or, you know, the seventh day of the week. It's the, it's the seventh day of the week is Saturday, <laughs> not Sunday. Um, which that should be the time for rest and meditating on God and these types of things. However, we, we're supposed to be doing that daily, every single day. But the point and simple fact is that the seventh day of the week is the day of rest. 
is the seventh day, is the Sabbath day, not Sunday. So Sundays, you know, and he goes on to say Sunday should be holidays. Workers should have Sundays off. He's not, now notice, he's not just including religious worship here. <laughs> he's, he's, he's basically broadening the scope of workers should have Sundays off, Sundays should be for families, and these types of things. So that's pretty interesting in and of it in and of itself right here. However, if you go further down to number nine, don't proselytize, respect others' beliefs. Now, I have no problem what you believe or what religion you believe, but I am not inclined to um, commit myself to another religion that doesn't, which doesn't acknowledge the only way to the Father is through the Son. Okay, that's where we, that's where I have the problem. Okay, and I am, I, I cannot scoop myself to that point of placing Jesus Christ on a level with everybody else. So don't proselytize, respect others' beliefs. We can inspire others through witness so that one grows together in communicating, but the worst thing of all is religious proselytism which paralysis I am talking with you in order to persuade you no each person dialogues starting with his and her own identity the church grows by attraction not proselytizing hmm. okay so and then number 10 work for peace we are living in a time of many wars he said and the call for peace must be shouted peace sometimes it gives the impression of being quiet but it is never quiet peace is always proactive and dynamic now that's very interesting because you can only have peace through chaos okay so he's saying a lot of things here but don't proselytize which we clearly see here in the, the Webster dictionary which means making converts so we're not to convert the lost to salvation that is that is against the vicar of god okay that is against the pope we're not supposed to be doing that you need to stop doing that we need to accept everybody regardless of religious creed or whatever or even if they're atheists or whatever we just need to accept them all <clears throat> so even the secular world is following in lockstep with this guy okay bowing a knee to the papacy basically and then here we have this interesting piece here from the Times of Israel. Want world peace? Build third temple. And let's go ahead and just play this video here. Let's see what it says. And then I will close.
there you have it okay so and again this uh, this article goes on to continue and says according to Rabbi Shaim Richmond the Institute's international director the temple would stand in the present location of the Dome of the Rock a Muslim shrine shrine Muslims revere the mount as a Harem al Sharif or a noble sanctuary, but Richmond did not set a target date for breaking ground for the construction project. The temple will be built, he told JTA, when the world will want us to build the temple. He says the Jewish people have a responsibility to all of humanity, including Islam, Richmond said. I don't expect it to come through come about through any sort of confrontation or any sort of military maneuver. The Jews have to represent good in the world, light in the world. So the Jews have to be the light of the world. Totally contrary to Jesus saying to his disciples and his followers, you are the light of the world. But obviously they don't accept Christ, so therefore they believe that the whole tribe of Judah is the light of the world. Not the Gentiles or you know Jews converted to uh, Christianity or whatever. But the Jews themselves, they are the light to the world. And unless the world recognizes that... We cannot have this temple built. And again, they believe that the temple needs to be built on the exact location of where the Dome of the Rock stands today. So again, will they do it? I don't know. Is it prophesied in scripture? No, it's not. But could it be used as to deceive millions upon millions upon millions of people? Absolutely. And deception is the name of the game. And that's what we have to be watched out. You know, that's what, that's what we have to be watchful for. You know, none of us are beyond being deceived, okay? So we have to be vigilant, we have to be sober, we have to be ready at all costs to give an account for what we believe. And so, until next time, truth be told, truth be known, stay safe, God bless, thank you for watching. Cross, you can see John 19.30 for that. In fact, the Bible also shows a temple veil was torn from top to bottom when Jesus died, proving it was finished. You can see Matthew 27.51 for that. So, I mean, when, he, when it was finished, it was finished, okay? We are the temple of God, okay? There is no need for a Jewish temple. <clears throat> like the keeping of feast days by some unfortunate Christians that have allowed themselves to be lured into apostasy by false teachers, Jews erecting a third temple today so as to sacrifice lambs for their sins mocks what Jesus declared was finished at Calvary. Will they build a temple? No clue, no care. However, if it helps to deceive billions, then count on it. Truth is, the campaign to do so has already deceived many to date. So whether they build it or not doesn't really matter because many are already being led to mock Christ so as to accept Antichrist. What, the, the, what this website says about this, which is very well accurate, it says the Temple Institute, he's quoting from that, article the temple institute which has rec recreated 60 vessels to be used in a third temple in which sponsors educational programs about the temple worldwide has created a one hundred thousand dollar indiegogo campaign to draft plans for a third temple now <clears throat> there is no prophesied nor is there any biblical need for a third temple okay the third temple is not prophesied you can look in Ezekiel or whatever and these types of things. Oh, let's see, it is prophesied. It's in Ezekiel 40 through 48. No, that's not talking about the third temple. However, any Christ working with the deceived minions in every nation on earth will demand a third temple so as to mock what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. Jesus plainly said it is finished when he died for us. On that. All right, as, uh, as deception keeps on ramping up to extreme measures, we uh, have this other recorded incident that, that came out a couple days ago of a video that came out of wanting world peace and build a third temple okay um, and here's the article right here which I'll get into in a moment but I'm gonna read what this uh, 